So back in 1978, I took my master plumber's license test. I took the written test and it was time to take the practical test. Now, back in those days, they were giving us lead wiping. We had to wipe lead joints in order to pass this test. Now, in 1978, there was very few lead wiping projects going on in the field, meaning nobody in the field was actually wiping lead joints any longer. So why give us this test? Frankly, I think it was just a way to eliminate some of us and it almost eliminated me. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my experience with the test. I'll show you what my one of my uh, practice pieces looks like, and I'll also show you what the test looked like today. And to tell you the truth, I'm kinda of glad I had a white lead, but that's all coming up, so stay tuned. So here is one of many, many practice pieces I did way back in the day. And what you're looking at here is basically um, a four inch stub, which typically you would use for a toilet, which is constructed of lead. This portion is lead. And then it is soldered onto a four inch brass ferrule. Then we inserted an inch and a half brass solder nipple through the lead, we soldered this joint, which was a horizontal joint. And finally, we had to solder a floor flange on top of the lead. And let me just walk you through it real quickly. So essentially, our first joint was the four inch joint. So we had our ferrule, we had our straight piece of lead. We would assemble this, put this together, start to prep it. And in the process of putting our solder on here, which was all done, by the way, with a ladle. We'd get a ladle and you would kind of knock the ladle into the piece. And as the solder would fall down, it would start to accumulate at the base of the ferrule, thereby heating it. And in order for us to keep the heat in there, we would actually get a bowling pin stick a bowling pin in the top here to keep the heat in because what we wanted to do is to get that solder to the point where it was very malleable because eventually we were going to have to start scraping it up with the ladle and putting it in our um, wiping cloth, which I will show you uh, in a little bit. And the wiping cloth is what we used actually to come around and, and do this joint. Once we had the four inch joint up, we would knock the bowling pin out in an effort to cool this down. And then we went through a process with a jig, which was a top, a wooden top. We would drill a hole in this piece. We would put the wooden top inside and on top was a jig that straddled this with a piece of threaded rod and a wing nut. We would turn the wing nut, it would pull the top out and actually pull the lead out and make a perfect flange through which this solder nipple would fit into perfectly. Then we put this onto a jig, which would hold it horizontally for us, and we proceeded to do the horizontal joint. Now, below, we would lay out a, kind of a mattress-looking material, and we would paint that mattress material with this soil pipe paint, and then we would impregnate that with paraffin wax in order uh, to allow the solder to, to, to not stick to it so that anything that would drop down and fall on this cloth, we would just be able to pick it up without anything sticking to it. So now that we've got this horizontal joint made, it was time to do the floor flange. And the floor flange was put on there with a soldering iron and bar solder. There was no torch involved here. It was simply a, a triangular shaped soldering iron. We would keep that in the flame. We would apply that to the solder and let the solder fall in there. And then we would form that joint by sliding the soldering iron over it. It was quite, uh, at the time, overwhelming for me because it took me a good month before I was even able to get the hang of getting this joint to stay up. I was getting very discouraged, but uh, you know what? I just kept at it and about a month into it, it just started happening for me. Now, after we did all of this, bear in mind the test wasn't over. What we had to do is we had to take this whole piece as it is. Again, we had a jig, a wooden jig. 
we'd put it up on a wooden jig and we had to caulk this. This ferrule had to be caulked into a four inch eighth bend, cast iron eighth bend, which essentially is a 45 degree fitting, which is female at the hub, male at the opposite end. We straddled that fitting in between our knees with this piece on the jig. Some guys would have the solder nipple facing up. Some guys would have it facing to the side. Some guys would have it facing down. And we had to caulk this in to that fitting. And because I don't have all the tools and all the parts and supplies I used to have when I had my business, I decided to do a screencast. So we're going to jump into a screencast. I'm going to show you what I had to do with this after I did this. I'll show you the process. I'll explain to you what what we had to do in terms of caulking it in there. And then uh, we will come back to the bench and uh, I will show you some examples of the, the oakum and uh, I'll show you the wiping cloth and a little bit about the technique I used to actually make the joint. But uh, there it is, guys. That's one of many, many practice pieces, which was nerve wracking. It was discouraging, but... Uh, Nevertheless, I got through it, and uh, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, I hope you enjoy the screencast. So again, I apologize for not having all these tools with me, but when I sold my company, you know, most of uh, my equipment, tools, and materials went with it. At any rate, so after we assembled our piece, we then had to do a horizontal joint into an extra heavy cast iron eight bend. Now, prior to me taking this test in 1978, I, I don't know how far back, I don't remember how far back, but after you put this piece in and you caulked it and you poured your lead, the inspector wanted to see the integrity of the joint. And what you had to do was basically you had to crack that hub open. You had to get a hammer, uh, a lump hammer, and bust that thing open. And you had to bust it open without uh, destroying your piece because they wanted to see that joint. And if you happen to bounce off that hub and it knocked into the lead and it destroyed your piece, that was it. You were done with the test. It was time to take it over again. They had a 55-gallon drum there where guys would just dump their ruined pieces. So that was a bummer. When I took the test, they were allowing us to um, use split eighth bends. And simply what I did is I bought an eighth bend, and then I took it to a machine shop, and they sliced it down the middle vertically. So essentially I had two halves and you assemble the two halves and we used like big stainless steel hose clamps, one around the hub, one around the opposite end. And we would hold that together. We would proceed to um, caulk the joint with the oakum, with the molten lead. And, and again, it's a horizontal joint. We used, uh, it was like an asbestos rope uh, up against the face of the hub and with a clamp and we would pour a ladle full of molten lead in there. And generally one ladle was all it took to fill up the joint. And then uh, we would take that rope off. We would have to trim up the lead and then we would have to proceed to caulk it both inside and outside. And I'll explain that to you about when we get back up onto the bench. But this was it. This was the process of uh, going through the practical. And again, they weren't using lead wiping um, at all, as I can remember. Maybe an occasional four-inch joint in the field, and you did it with a torch. You certainly didn't do it with a ladle and a and a and a, a pot of molten lead. But I I feel that this was a way to eliminate guys, and it did. There's no question about it. It almost eliminated me because I could not get a joint up for. A good month when I started uh, going to school. At any rate, to those of you who are plumbers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And to those of you who aren't, I hope uh, I explained myself. At any rate, let's hop back up at the bench and we'll we'll see if we can wrap this up. So pretty crazy stuff, right? Um, now, once we took this and inserted it into that cast iron. Um, eighth bend then and it was in the jig it was in the horizontal jig then we would have to wrap or yarn our oakum or it's like an oil impregnated hemp we'd go around and we use a series of i had a bunch of different irons but these are yarning irons and this is how you would shove 
you would shove the oakum into the joint and you would actually build it up to the point where it got to within about one inch of the hub. And at that point, you would get an asbestos rope, which they actually called a runner, and you would wrap it around that horizontal joint. And through use of a clamp, we would actually clamp the top of it, and this would be up against the hub. And then we would proceed to uh, we would proceed to uh, pour in the the lead from the top here, and then it would run into the joint, and this would keep it keep it from coming out. Then we would have to take this off, and then there would be a little protrusion at the top of the joint where that runner was tied together. And we would have to knock that little bead off, that little bead of lead. And then we went with a series of inside and outside irons. They made irons that you could um, hit the lead in. You would hit it in to expand it into the joint. And uh, this is not one of This is straight iron, but they made curved irons. They made inside curves, outside curves. You'd go around the joint. Go around the outside of the joint, then you go around the inside of the joint, and you could follow it up with your straight uh, iron here and and whack the lead in so it would, it would expand. Uh, the instructors were looking for about one inch of lead all around, a consistent one inch depth all around. And uh, yeah, that's that's the way it was. And I just want to show you a little bit about the technique. Now on the bottom here, we had our cloth, which was all painted with the soil pipe paint and, and the actual process of getting this shape was to take your wiping cloth now bear in mind this these wiping cloths here are modern wiping cloths which actually the quality is terrible back in the day we got good quality wiping cloths but and bear in mind this too these are stiff because they've been in the truck and they're impregnated with wax once these get warm and you start working with them they get very 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 malleable and they get hot but we did this barehanded guys this was none, none of this glove baloney so what we would do essentially once you got this joint up same thing for the horizontal joint but essentially once you got this joint up and you had this nice malleable soft pliable putty like uh solder sitting at the bottom here uh you know you could actually through use of the ladle pick some of it up, put it on your cloth, and, and you could start building and building. But essentially, the final the final technique was with the old three-finger technique here. And, and this is a very stiff cloth. If this gets hot, it'll be very, very malleable. It'll be nice and round. You won't have any sharp points on it. But essentially, you're going to try to do this in three shots. You're going to come around. Once you're happy with the amount of solder on it, you're going to come around. Three finger technique, you gotta come around, you gotta come all the way around once. You gotta reach around with the other hand as far as you can. You gotta come around twice. And then finally, generally, you take that third swipe either to the right or to the left. And hopefully, you were happy with that joint. As I mentioned, I wasn't happy with my first joint when I did take the test in the. Uh, instructors were looking at me like I had two heads. And uh, when they told me uh, you should have left the first one up, I said to myself, shit, what did I go and do? But at any rate, it happened to work out. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's that, that. This was my test. Now, let me back up. Prior to doing this, and prior to constructing this whole piece and caulking it into the eight bend, and then opening up the eight bend, and by the way, I was allowed to use the split um, eight bend. Prior to me, the guys who couldn't use the eight bend had to actually break it open with a hammer. If they broke it, if they went to hit that eight bend and they smashed their piece, you take this, you throw it. They had 55 gallon drums there filled up with damaged pieces. You failed the test, that was it. You had three cracks at taking this. Once you passed the written, you had three cracks at the practical. And if you happen to hit this by mistake because you were trying to knock your eight bend apart that's it you failed but at any rate prior to going in and doing this you have to go into a room they stick you in a room they give you a riser diagram they assign you a riser you have to do the material takeoff meaning you have to figure out all the cast iron all the fittings the 
amount of oakum, the amount of lead that's going to be needed in order to complete that whole riser. And that's got to be correct. Otherwise, you fail the test. So at the time, it was uh, stressful. It was uh, aggravating. But anyway, I got through it. And I came to find out uh, uh, early, late July, actually, that I had passed the test. And uh, at age 28, uh, I got my master plumber's license. So what I'm going to do is I just, before we wrap this up, I just want to show you um, what today's test looks like. And frankly, <laughs> I'm glad I had a white lead. I don't know that I could have passed uh, today's test. Uh, but uh, stand by. I'm going to show you what that looks like. And then we'll wrap up this test. But guys, this is what I did. And like I said, this was something that wasn't being done anymore back in 1970, uh, well, it would be 77, the year before I took the test. And, you know, I, I everybody wondered why are they making us wipe lead? Well, simply, I think it was to uh, eliminate a lot of guys because uh, this wasn't easy. And, uh, but, you know, if you wanted your license, you had to go through the, the pain. At any rate, uh, let's take a look at today's test and then we will wrap up. All right, so first off, I want to apologize for the fuzzy photo, but I found this online because I couldn't get too much information about it. And let me just say this, I'm not 100% sure about the content of the whole current New York City License Master Plumbers Test. So if those of you that are watching this know more about it, please leave your comments below where possibly I or somebody else watching this can get information. But it is my understanding that the practical test today consists of what they call a triple offset, which is a series of fittings and nipples, three quarter inch that have to be put together in a specific manner. And it's my understanding that, uh, these nipples can be bought in sets, um, and you're not allowed to use any pipe joint compound or any Teflon on the joints, and you have to put this whole jig together that you're looking at. Once it's all put together, you'll see the pressure test port there on the left. It's pressured up to, I believe it's 100 PSI. If I'm wrong, please correct me. 100 PSI, they put it in water. And they look for bubbles. It has to hold for X amount of time. Then in addition, uh, there is a second part of the test. And in the lower right, you're going to see uh, it's a copper jig. Uh, it's a, uh, I believe, three-inch copper that reduces, uh, I believe, to one inch. And then from one inch to half inch, or it reduces from three inch to three-quarter inch and then to half inch. And it's a vertical copper piece. You have to solder vertical copper joints, and there can be no dripping back of the solder from the vertical joint. If it starts to drip back or they see any signs of dripping, you fail the test. Now, I was speaking to somebody today that told me uh, there's also another part to this test that involves vitalic fittings, connecting black pipe to copper pipe with these vitalic fittings. I'm not sure about it. If Anybody watching this is sure about it, please leave your comments down below. And I believe there is an element of uh, a riser diagram reading where you have to do some takeoff on materials, but that's what I know about the current New York City License Master Plumbers Test. And frankly, guys, I'd rather wipe lead. Uh, as much as I had a hard time putting that joint up way back then, I think this is a much more difficult task. So my hat's off to the people who are taking this test today and actually passing it. So that's it. Let's jump back to the video and we will wrap this up. So there you go, guys. My experience with my practical test. Now, I don't know what part of the country some of you may be watching from, but what was your practical test like? I'd love to hear about it. Leave your comments down below this video. You know, it took me a good month before I actually was able to get a four inch joint up to stay on the pipe and, and actually get to actually wipe it. And I was getting really nervous about the process, but you know, like all of a sudden it came to me and it just started happening. And uh, you know, when that instructor looked at me and as I was walking out and said to me, um, you know, you should have left the first joint up. I was like, well, what the hell did that mean? 
I was really nervous. I actually thought I blew it at that point, but as luck would have it, I actually passed the test. So at age 28, I was a licensed marriage diploma. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got a little insight into what I went through to get my license. And I would love to hear again, leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear your experience, what, what you guys have to do to get a license uh, in, in the state you're from. And as always, I'd like to wish you all happy plumbing. Stay tuned. I got more in store for everybody. Stay well. I'll see you next time.